out here at Paul on a Tuesday. You just put in some motos. What's been up, man? It's been a little while since we checked in with you. Yeah, I'm back out mm -hmm. in California. Just, uh, you know, just living the dream. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. I, uh, you know, a lot of people probably know I was injured. I had a really bad wrist injury that was like, went from not so bad to bad to really, really bad. And uh, yeah, there's just a mix of, you know, so-so doctors, I don't know, a lot of different things, honestly, that, you know, if I could go back, I would do it a completely different way. But uh, I'm here and uh, yeah, it was uh, basically, yeah, I slipped on a knack whip, uh, which happens occasionally. With, but normally it's normally it's not so bad. Normally you can uh, it, it kind of slips in a spot where you can still put yourself back on the bike and then still land okay and it's not. So I've done it a bunch of times and uh, yeah, this one time it was just weird like my foot was almost back over the bike and then it slipped off, which is like a really odd place for it to happen. And when it did, it was like I was, it's like I slipped on ice. And I was just, it was so late and I was already going back. And I'm just sitting there under the bike because I'm like whipped out doing a knack. And there was just, there was no way. So I just tossed it. But I, you know, I landed on my feet. I rolled to the left, all my dirt was like on this side. And then I get up and it's like my right wrist is hurting. And I'm like, this doesn't make any sense, dude. How did I get my right wrist? And uh, yeah, it's, I guess uh, it was supposedly similar to Roxxon's. That's what I was told. Uh, but I had a worse dislocation. So when it dislocated, it pinched all of my nerves that run into my hand, which like, basically jacked them up for a while so the first couple months or so after I had surgery when they released the pressure off it, it uh, you know my I really didn't have any movement in my hand or anything like I kind of lost almost everything I just sit there and I'd be like come on, come on. and uh, yeah so that slow healing and then uh, it just being casted for so long it uh, by the time I was able to start therapy everything was just so jacked and so locked up it was it was uh you know a couple months just learning to reuse my fingers and stuff and then a couple more months trying to get my wrist and my fingers like moving again because i was basically just locked like a little claw for like 11 months <laughs> and uh yeah that was it slowly but surely uh, things got better and then I started mountain biking and that got it a little better and then put the thumb throttle on to start getting some impacts on my wrist and that made it a little better and now here I am riding a twist throttle and uh, you know I mean I still got a ways to go but hey you know what I can ride I can there's not too much I have an issues with like jumping and stuff it's just like relearning the that little fine touch right. I'm kind of missing so I get whiskey every once in a while I jump off berms every once in a while but other than that it's, it's not so bad at first uh, when you first started riding though you mentioned you had a thumb throttle you had a thumb throttle done up on your KTM 450 um, that's pretty that's kind of unique talk about that that had to help out a little <laughs> bit right yeah the thumb throttle honestly it was just uh, it was like it was a last minute like ditch effort to try to go to X Games. I had, it was coming up, it was like three weeks away and I was, I had rode around a little bit and I tried the twist but I, I couldn't control it uh, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't twist it all the way at all and I don't know, it was just impacts everything. I just, for whatever reason, I wasn't ready for the twist throttle and so I, I figured the only, the only chance I had of jumping a ramp successfully was if I could figure out how to do it with a thumb throttle and just brace my wrist so it didn't move. And then, uh, you know, figured if I jumped it right and I greased it, I could probably do it. <laughs> well, you did. You, you got into X Games with with that whole setup. Yeah. Talk about that. That's rad. Yeah, that was the thing. It was I started riding with it and I I didn't have much time, so I rode the track two days. 
and it, it didn't feel that bad so I was like okay this is reasonable but you know on the moto track you, you don't need to like you don't need full throttle necessarily you don't need to really like whop on it and stuff you know it's you're going fast and you're scrubbing and all that so it, it wasn't bad on the moto a little weird in turns and stuff because you weren't using the throttle but uh, as soon as I went to the ramp I just I started it in you know like 50 feet or something and just made sure I could clear it and then I just I literally just slowly moved it back I only had like two days really to do it so the first day I got it back to like 65 and I was like or 60 65 and I was like okay I'm I'm close I only got to go like 10 12 more feet and I should be okay and then so the next uh, on the Wednesday before X Games I got it back to 75 and then I just I just made my runway like as short as possible and I would turn around and I just made sure my run was identical every time and I just knew okay full throttle at the bottom full throttle at the bottom and then I did because you know I didn't really learn like I didn't have control so much of the thumb I couldn't really tell like what was happening what was so it was just easier to just walk why push it to the stop and then I'd make the ramp and so yeah that's what I did <laughs> it worked out it totally worked and then I got there and I mean I threw I actually didn't feel that bad I yeah. felt like if I had a couple more weeks with it I mean, I, I could only seat bounce because of where it's positioned. I couldn't stand and right. hit the ramp. And I could only whip my, what's my opposite way, um, technically. Uh, so, you know, it was a little weird, but but it wasn't that bad. I was like, dang, if I could have had another week or two, I really think I could have been, like, a little more competitive right. with, you know, not to win, but, you know, maybe I could okay. squeeze up towards that bronze or something, yeah. maybe. and. And I thought the ramp was good there, so a couple of the guys, I think, didn't like it. The runway was kind of weird for me. I, it didn't matter because I hadn't been riding anything else. For the other guys, probably that had been riding other ramps, it was a little, like a little off. So, yeah. Hey, you know what I rode? I made yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you've had an up and down, how long, 14 months now since it's... Since, yeah. since the injury? It was 11 months to get back on the bike, and then uh, last three, 13, so, yeah. 13 to get to the twist throttle. Right. So 14 months, and, and you're still not even out of the woods yet. You know, that's, that's obviously something that no one would look forward to, but there was, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel for you, in a sense, this year. Um, you're the newest member of the Weed Maps team. That's pretty rad. Talk about that. Yeah. So that was yeah yeah that was the silver lining and the uh, and the whole thing is when I was sitting there on the couch like missed Monster Cup. New Year was starting. I was like had all these plans that I was just pushing aside because I couldn't ride. I uh, yeah I ended up getting a call from the Weed Maps guys and they basically needed you know a guy that free rode did X Games. All that stuff made content filmed uh, all that good stuff and I talked with them it sounded like a good a good fit I came out had a meeting with them everything and you know they were really into like ideas for filming and really open to different things which is really hard and with, with a lot of sponsors and other companies is you know there's a lot of red tape and like corporate stuff now that it's hard to get them to approve budgets for videos and things that a lot of guys like me and you know everybody else like the Behrmans and you know it's a struggle mm -hmm. <laughs> like we all want to film stuff and make cool cool things but to get the money and to get it all passed through uh, with sponsors and stuff is really tough so just the fact that they were open to it and kind of like yeah what do you think what do you want to do uh, really kind of sold me on it a lot and then at the same time they were signing Jimmy Hill uh, on Stack on Instagram and uh, you know I did the Moto 9 part with him last year and I had been riding with him and stuff and if anybody follows him they know the videos and the stories he puts on his on his Instagram uh, he's a very creative guy and so yeah man we were as soon as they signed him, I was like, dang, this is an awesome team. Like, if you guys send us out, we can make some videos. Like, <laughs> let's do this. No doubt, so, no doubt. So it's pretty cool. Awesome. So I'm, I'm going to be on, on with them. Like, you know, it was kind of a late deal.
wheels, so just through the remainder of this year, and then I should be on it all the way through 2019. Awesome stuff. Rad, yeah, man. So, uh, Monster Cup, is that, is that what's up next for you? Yeah, Monster Cup is, awesome. uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta get back in comp mode now, kind of, because, yeah, got Monster Cup coming in a month and a half, and then uh, Sydney X Games is literally the weekend after, so. I, you know, I was home in Florida starting to ride a little, and we just, we had a really, really bad rainy season, and uh, it's been really hard to be consistent, and uh, the stuff I have at my house to practice 4X games and whatnot, I just can't get it, it's just too wet all the time to really use it, so I just load, basically loaded up my van as soon as I saw the weather report. And I basically, I rode two days with the twist throttle, saw the weather report for the new te the next like two weeks, and I loaded up my van, headed to Denver, <laughs> picked up Tedesco, and then me and him just rode a trip through Utah for a week, Killer. and just rode Caneville and all these places, yeah. and, uh, and then I slowly worked my way here, and then, uh, yeah, now I'm out here, so hopefully, I still have to work out some details as far as like where and what to practice for Monster Cup and X Games. So uh, I'm kind of just winging it, and then I'll, I'll have to I'll have to go somewhere, obviously, whether it's here or Canada or wherever I got to go. You know, I got to ride quarter bike and step up and all that stuff. So that'll be kind of easing into it, trying to get everything working normal again, and then towards the end of the month, early October, you know, I'll have a couple weeks to like jump into that stuff full time and I'll probably, it'll be just that up until it's time to go. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, Tom P, thanks for sitting down with us. Always a pleasure talking with you. Uh, and we'll be cheering for you. Monster Cup, dude. All right. Thanks, man. Wait, should I go shirtless on this one? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll do it on the next question. I